Hey, what's up, y'all? You're watching back. Today, we have a video that's been a long time coming ever since I released the Engine to Explain video back in April 5th of 2020. Well, here it is a year later. Hit that sub button because I'm finally going to explain turbo and superchargers and how to pick the best for your needs and given situation in NFS heat. When it came to NFS heat, picking the engines was hard enough. It often involved buying different engines to find the right fit. Turbochargers and superchargers add a whole new dynamic to each engine as well. It's never as simple as picking the one that gives you the most PI. It's even less so when it comes to drift builds. Adding on to that, most people assume that the twin turbo option is the best because two turbos. And that there is no difference between the screw and root supercharger. Hate to tell you, but that's wrong. Don't worry, first I'll give you a TLDR and explain the differences between tubos and superchargers, and there are entire videos explaining more in depth how they work in real life if you like to learn more. After that, I'll go on and explain what each tubo and supercharger does, and what it does best, including the least used centrifugal supercharger. Timestamps in the description if you want to revisit any part of this guide. Quick disclaimer! This guide is based on in-game uses of these parts and only reflect the real world use in the most basic idea in form. So if something seems off, this is why. Okay, so what's the difference? They both add more power, don't they? Yeah, kinda. They do the same type of job, but they achieve it in different ways. Tuber chargers are powered by the output of exhaust gases, thus don't do much aside from look cool at lower RPMs. The exhaust helps spin a fan that sucks in air and compresses it into a scroll to give the engine a boost. Due to this, they take some time to spool and really give you a boost in power at the top end, but lag at the low end. Superchargers, on the other hand, are belt driven by the engine itself, thus are able to give you instant power at the lower end, but really start to drop off at the top end, so they don't really help with top speed. They're more or less opposites. So in the most basic applications, turbos will give you more power at the top end of the RPMs and better top speed, while superchargers will give you more power at the low end and better acceleration. But then there's the black sheep, the odd child in the family called a centrifugal supercharger. This looks like a turbo oftentimes, but it's belt driven. So it's the best of both, right? A turbo that gives you some power? That's gotta be the best. Sadly, that's not the case. Centrifugal is still much like a tubo as it needs to spool, thus still having the lag like a tubo, and it still drops off at the top end like a supercharger. Okay, so then there's no real best of for all applications. How do I choose between the five? Well, let's cover the turbochargers first. You have the choice between a single and a twin tubo. The single turbocharger is one big tubo. This means that in the vast majority of applications, the single tubo will give you little to nothing in the low to mid range. However, the single turbo will give you loads of boost at the top end. This makes cars with amazing acceleration even faster, ensuring that you can reach and stay at top speeds. I found the single turbo pairing really well with the 180SX flat 6 engine swap, and it goes great with many supercars that already have great acceleration. So to put it simply, if you have a car that's really fast but can't seem to reach or stay at top speeds, that's where the single turbo will do serious work. The downside is that it has little to no application in muscle builds. Due to the way that muscle cars were done by design in NFS heat, they can't reach the top speeds of other cars like European or JDM. And due to this, the single turbo will barely begin to give you its true potential as the car begins to top out, making the single turbo a poor choice. The single turbo is also not a great choice in most drift builds as you won't be hard redlining through every corner. On to the twin turbo. The twin turbo is, well, two turbos. I can't express enough that a twin turbo is not two of the single turbos and don't even give you the same type of performance. The twin turbo option is actually a small turbo and a mid-sized turbo, regardless of what the in-game description says, kinda why this video exists in the first place. However, it does more or less equal out to the overall power of the single twin turbo option, but for a different given application. We know that turbos take time to spool and give their optimum power at the higher end. This still holds true, but what the twin option has over the single option is actually that little turbo. Since it's much smaller, it means it could spool much faster than its mid-sized sibling, meaning you get a small boost while the bigger turbo takes time to spool. By the time the small turbo gives you all the power it can give, 
the mid-sized turbo starts to kick in. The downside is that due to the turbos being smaller, the top end is not as powerful as the single turbo option, but you still get good power and even better mid-range boost. The twin turbo option is good for applications where your car can get good top speed and acceleration, but needs a bit of a boost to really push it over the edge at the mid to top. I find myself often using the twin turbo in drift builds that are fast or more often in dirt builds as the top speed is often soft capped to about 146. This gives you the most out of both turbos and makes dirt builds incredibly fast. Alright so that's the options between turbos. Now to the superchargers and that weird little centrifugal that most people ignore. There are three types of superchargers, roots, screw or often called twin screw and the centrifugal. The roots and screw superchargers do their job in much the same way with two spinning screw-like rods forcing air into the engine. The screws or rods bend together almost like gears. The difference is in design, but that has little to no bearing in NFS. The third is different. Centrifugal forces in air much in the same way as turbos, with a fan that sucks in air into a scroll, except that it's still spun by a belt like the other two superchargers. Too many players assume that there is no difference between the roots and screw superchargers, and the in-game descriptions don't do much to dissuade players from believing that's the case. But there are key differences between the two and similarities as well, which adds even more to the confusion. Since both work the same way, they both give instant power at the low end and drop off at the top end. The screw supercharger gives immediate boost from the start, giving you an amazing takeoff from the get-go but has little to no boost at the top end as the boost drops off dramatically as it reaches that top range. Almost like the direct opposite of a single turbo actually. This results in amazing acceleration and excellent consistent boost at the low to mid range. The screw supercharger is often my go to for the vast majority of my drift builds as the boost kicks in right away and keeps on giving as I jam through the corners. This is also a good option for slower muscle cars as you keep getting boost at the majority of the power band. The Roots Supercharger still gives you a great boost at the low end, but it's slightly lower than that of the Screw Supercharger. Instead, the benefit is that the drop off is less drastic at the top end, and still keeps giving a bit of boost. So it's kind of like the twin turbo option of the Supercharger. The Roots is still an excellent choice in drift builds, especially since the boost is fairly consistent through the low, mid, and top range. Though the top is a fair bit lower than that of Turbos, it's still higher than that of the screw supercharger. If you need or want consistency, the Roots is your option. I often find myself using the Roots in muscle drift builds like the Boss 302, or when I find a build that needs a bit more top end but still a good low end. It's also a good alternative choice in dirt builds depending on your playstyle. Finally, we come to the last of the charger options, the Centrifugal. As I mentioned before, the Centrifugal works much like a tuba as it needs time to spool, but there's still a drop off towards the top end like a supercharger. So really, a centrifugal is the worst of both worlds. There is one area it excels and that's the mid range. A centrifugal is great on cars that have a great low end acceleration and good top end, but needs some help in the mid range, or to stay in that mid range for longer periods. The mid range boost is still higher than the twin turbo option, but the boost is lower at the lower range and top range. The drop off at the higher range is far less drastic than the other two supercharger options. However, that boost is still a fair amount lower than the single and twin turbo options. Think of the boost of the centrifugal a bit like a pyramid if you will that has a bigger lower portion than normal. I have to be honest, I have little to no actual go to applications for the centrifugal, as the other four options are often better at their given applications. The only things I can come up with as far as uses go is fast dirt builds in the more sprint like races or drift runs with wide turns. Another might be an engine that really needs help in the mid range, though there aren't many of these in game, thus the centrifugal still remains the least used option by myself or anyone I know. There's still a lot more information on the turbo and supercharges that I can go into, but since this is a game and the in game counterparts are more of an idea application to the real world counterparts rather than exact copies, the information may not actually be of any use. Still, there may be things here and there that I may have missed. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I cleared a few things up. If you have any questions or comments, as always, drop those down below. Or you can join the Discord! You can ask questions and have more direct answers and help from myself and other members of the community. So make sure to click the link in the description and join the VKZ Discord. 
Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for future content and streams right here on YouTube. Take care of yourselves and of each other, and as always, have a good one.